can't do it. So what's up and welcome back to my channel i have been meaning to do this video for so long and if you've been subscribed to me then you know that i could not find my sd card my sister bought me an sd card with like hella space on it she lost it and so now um i just bought a new one myself went to the store last night because i really wanted to film this video for video for you all so as you can see by the title this is about um you know, my testimony, not being able to drive, you know, getting close to my 30s, not being able to drive, like filling my um, perm, filling my license test, like, you know, your, your road test or whatever, like six times, seven times. And like basically how God brought me through that. So I want to start off with um, a scripture. So the scripture for today is Isaiah 4. Sorry, Isaiah 41, 10, and it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So that was from, like I said, Isaiah 41, 10. And that's our scripture for today. And it definitely applies to my time, my video, all this. So I'm going to bring up my notes because y'all know that I want to be organized and stuff in my videos now. So I got notes, bro, notes, yes. So basically, I'm going to start at the beginning, give you guys a little like backstory about my driving or lack thereof. So I really hope that like you all can um, gain something from this story time testimony because I'm a firm believer that we don't go through things for ourselves, that we go through things also so that other people can learn from it and so that we can inspire others to continue to trust God in their situations and to see if God brought this person through it, God can, br can bring me through it. And he wants us to use our testimonies to help others. So that is the reason why I'm sharing this video with you all. I hope you all like this video or enjoy it or hope that somebody can take something from it. Like I said, if only one person can take something from this video, then this video did its job because I really want to share this story with you all. Like, I don't know if it'll all come together and make sense, but it means so much to me because I went through so much in this process of failing this test seven times. I went through so much of like fear and doubt and not trusting God and just not believing in myself and not having help and not have you know not having anybody to be there for me so, so I had a fear of driving like a real fear of driving like it was nothing that I had seen anybody I know doing like I was just really really afraid like I was I had this true like deep-seated fear in my um mind about driving like so i keep envisioning car accidents car accidents car accidents like that's my biggest fear i don't want to get in a car accident don't want to die or anything like that and at this time in my church a lot of people are dying in car accidents little girls and adult women are dying in car accidents it's my biggest fear at this time and it's what's truly holding me back from driving even though i don't realize it at the time that is my biggest fear in driving I would watch my dad drive and I would think this is the most complicated thing in the world. Like, I don't think I can ever do this, especially when it came to like changing lanes. Like, I really thought changing lanes was the hardest thing in the world. Like, I would say, you know, if I could drive straight, maybe I would drive. But turning and changing lanes, so it was already in my mind of like something I could not do. And like I said, super afraid. I had a lot of anxiety when it came to driving like like deep deeply 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 and I was so scared especially when I thought of like being tested on driving or any of those things like so freaking scared in my family none of the women in our family drive like none of the women in our family drive like my mama don't drive my sister don't drive my granny didn't drive my aunt that lived 
down the road and drive like uh, my my uncle's wife didn't drive, which is my aunt, you know, through marriage. And her daughter that she had didn't drive. Like, nobody drove. Like, I even have a family member that didn't drive. But they would buy cars and then, like, have other family members, like, drive them where they need to go because they just do not drive. So, I never really, like, grew up seeing women drive. So, I never really had an intention to drive. It was never, like, a goal of mine. It was nothing that I even really saw and thought was possible. And I was the type of person that... If I didn't see it around me, I really didn't think it was possible for me or I would see it with other people and not believe it was possible for me because I had never seen it up close, you know? And that's why representation matters and it's so important for children. It really is because me growing up, like not really seeing women drive, even like most of my mom's friends didn't drive, the ladies at church didn't drive. And like the only ladies that I knew that drove were like people like her coworkers would drive like, um... My sister had ended up learning to drive my older sister, but like she was always in car accidents. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't have like a good, I didn't have like a good role model around me as the one female driver that I knew. So, um, fast forward when I was 16, um, you know, that time came and went, I had no real interest in like driving. I don't think I took the test, um, would go to the MBA cause my mom, didn't drive she couldn't drive but she would go take like her learners and stuff all the time because she said she wanted to learn how to drive she really did have like an interest to learn to drive so that was kind of opened my mind up a little bit to the possibility fast forward um she used to bring the books home and we like never used to read them maybe like glance through them every now and again but not read them so she when i graduated high school um that summer, I think I went a few places, right? And I was so happy because I really didn't have like a lot of friends in high school and I didn't start making friends in high school until towards the end of high school. So when I was out of high school and like people were wanting to help me, like I was making friends, I was like, yes, my life is gonna get better. I'm gonna have friends, blah, blah, blah. And that's gonna lead to like a whole nother story time, but stay tuned. So my mom comes to me and she's like, um, you can't go out with your friends until you get a learner's permit. Until you get a learner's permit, you cannot go out with your friends. Because I guess she wanted me to, like, learn how to drive and stuff like that. But I really, sorry, didn't have an interest in it. And, oh my gosh, look at my eye. See, this is what I get for, like, trying to put a little bit of makeup on. Like, you see, I put a little bit of eyeshadow on. Lord, I didn't rubbed it all off. But, so, she was like, she, I, she wanted me and my sister to get, like, permits or whatever. So, why is my hand just coming But she wanted us to get permits. And so, I think we were, like, not really taking her seriously. Like, we were still making plans with people. And she will be like, no, you're not leaving this house because you don't have a permit. So, I ended up getting a permit. But it was really towards, like, the end of the summer. I want to say, like, late July, early August. That's when people are, like, you know, packing up going to school so I really didn't get to like hang out with the people that I wanted to and I was so mad so I went to college had the permit and I like never did anything with it never went anywhere never did anything with it like never drove um my school was in walking distance to a lot of things it was a long walk and it was not safe but not that safe in that area that you had to walk through to like get to stores and stuff but I took it when I needed to so I didn't know how to drive. Fast forward, I think, um, I want to say two years later, I got a permit again. And I was like, this time, I'm going to learn how to drive. So uh, I used to go with my dad, I want to say like a year later, because like I said, I was in school during the summer. So I would be home in the summer, get the permit, then go back to school, don't use it. So one summer, my dad decided that he was going to um, take me to learn how to drive. Because my dad didn't really have an interest to teach me how to drive either because I was such a, like, I was the baby of the family. So my dad just wanted to protect me, you know, drive me where I needed to go, blah, blah, blah. So he started, like, do, saying that he was going to give us driving lessons. But, like, if we didn't get out of the house by a certain time, the driving lesson would be canceled. It was like, dang, are they trying to set me up? So I ended up, I ended up finally getting up on time because like, it was a long process because I, I i'm lazy i mean i was in my lazy girl era let's say that i was in my lazy girl era and i decided to get up you know we go to the driving lesson i think we have like 
five driving lessons and then we just don't have any driving lessons no more. And the last one I felt went like really well. So I'm like, what the heck? So I go back to school in the fall, come back home. That next summer, um, I did like a few more driving lessons. And this time I'm starting to get like more comfortable. My dad is helping me a lot with like steering. So I'm learning with steering. And then I think my permit expires and he's like, I'm not teaching how to drive anymore until you get a new permit. So of course, summer's over, go back to school, graduate this time. And then um, that next year in I think like January, I actually go and get another permit. So by this time I'm on permit number three, permit number three. And I'm like, okay, cool, got permit number three. And I don't know what happened at the time. Well, my dad wasn't teaching me how to drive, but he wasn't. And like, I would go to family members and I would say like, hey, can you teach me how to drive? I will pay you, blah, blah. They'd be like, no. Go to the next family member. Hey, can you teach me how to drive? I'll pay you. No. Next family member, and so on and so forth. So at this point, I'm like, dang, I have no help. So I think, oh, so after that, I had a friend, right? I had a friend and he was like, I'll have a story time about this, but this is a, this is a good thing that he did. So he decided to help me learn how to drive. So he would take me like every Sunday when he had free time and my sister and he would take us and teach us how to drive. And I'm so grateful for the steering practice that I got from my dad because honey, these new age drive people, driving people do not like learn to drive from a friend. Sometimes they don't really know how to teach you properly but he did teach me he did give me lots of practice so I was putting all that on my all that on my like you know the driving instructor book like the permit book I was putting all the information on the book every summer every time I went I was putting on the book my dad was signing my papers and this guy was signing my papers so I or initialing them so I did that and then I'm like okay cool I I'm getting practice I'm getting practice boom he gets a new car he gets a new car and he's like, I can't, I can't help you anymore because I have a new car and I don't want you to crash it, blah, blah. I'm like, if I didn't crash your old car, what make you think I'm going to and crash the new car, but whatever. So he says, I can't crash, I can't, I can't drive the new car. I, I'm going to drive that. So I go ahead and I don't, you know, we basically quit driving lessons. I have another friend. He's like, I'll teach you how to drive, blah, blah, blah. So he comes with me up. We go to driving lessons. Like, he's like, oh my God, I don't know. I guess I was a bad driver. I don't know. But he cut the lesson short. Like, I think we drove for maybe like 45 minutes. I don't even think we drove for 45 minutes. But maybe for like 45 minutes. And at these times, I was not going out on the road. Like, these people was not taking me on the road. They were taking me to parking lots, like school parking lots. And my dad I told my dad I was like dad I've been getting you know driving lessons from this person I've been getting driving lessons from that person like who been helping me so I don't know if that made my dad like you know okay maybe I should you know make it, it made him like they gave him some motivation or something so my dad decided like he finna teach me how to drive so he starts teaching me everything's going well like um at this point still I've never been on the road never been on the road and he starts teaching me and I his car actually breaks down it breaks down and by this time my dad is like 75 so at this point he's like you know what I don't want to teach you how to drive no more because no he said that he didn't want to drive no more like he was actually done driving he was gonna take the bus he was just gonna live a very simple life he said like this car been going bad it's too much for me I'm irritated my dad's a mechanic as well so he was like actually I don't even feel like fixing it like I'm done I'm too old for this. I'm just finna take the bus. Like, I don't know what his problem was, but he was like, I'm, I'm finna take the bus. So during this time, I was taking the bus too, and I wasn't um, learning how to drive anymore. So one day I was home, and I decided that I was going to go to driving school. So every month I'd be like, all right, I'm going to driving school. I'm going to driving school. I'm going to driving school. So one day I actually called the driving school, and I'm thinking like, okay, they're going to say, um we have a class next month, we have a class in three weeks, we have a class such and such date. They go, actually, we have a driving class that starts tonight. And I'm like, tonight? But I was like, you know what? If I don't take this opportunity now, I am never going to take it. Let me show you the goodness of God. So 
they tell me that they actually have a sale going on and so I get a discount they also say I can pay part on the first day part at the end of the first week part in the next week and then the rest I pay off on the last day before I leave God is so good so I decided to go to the driving school. I decided to go to the driving school that night. I had my sister drop me off and I didn't tell my family because I had so much like trouble, like getting people to help me. So I was like, I didn't tell my family. So I didn't tell my family nothing about going to driving school. I just went on my own. Got my sister to drop me off at the train station. I took the train up there with myself. So I go to driving school, everything's going well. And then like at the end of the week, um, I leave late or something and I think the buses had stopped running. I don't know, something like that. So I ended up calling my dad. And my dad's like, okay, well, tell me where you are and I'll come get you. So I told him where I was. And he was like, what are you doing over there? And I was like, I'll tell you when you come get me. So he comes and gets me. And I tell him that I'm in driving school. And so I told him, don't tell the rest of the family. Like, don't tell anybody. And he's like, okay, I'm not going to tell anybody. He doesn't tell anybody. So fast forward, I graduate driving school, but I don't have anybody to help me. I have no one to help me. And I decide to go to... I decide to go.